Hey guys, so a quick video on that if you are facing any issue with the Docker and Docker desktop and uh, in your system because of uh, Docker, it will make your system very slow and you are not able to use other uh, applications. You are not able to use your browser properly because it takes a lot of CPU and the memory utilization. So there is a solution for that or stack. You can use it and you can replace and migrate all the Docker images and the containers and everything towards or stack so you go to opstack.dev uh, say goodbye to slow clunky containers and the vms and you can migrate all your images and the containers to opstack i'm not saying that you are not going to use a docker but i'm saying you are not supposed to use docker desktop or docker system on your system right so this is what they claim that it's very fast light and simple and lightning fast light as feather effortless integration and robust connectivity endless capability unbelievable it's very very simple actually yes no doubt about it and then this is what they claim with respect to speed if you say that opstack is taking around 17 minutes uh, time to provision development environment lower is better and the docker desktop is taking around 45 minutes same thing for the build it's taking around seven minutes, but the Docker desktop at the same time is taking around 19 minutes. The build is on ARM64 and the AMD64 images. CPU and the battery utilization, if you see that the background power uses, it's around 27 uh, MW. And then here it's taking around 123 MW here. And same thing for the CPU and the battery. Opstack is taking around only 82 MW and this is taking around 137 MW. So this is what they claim and I personally felt it because I have already downloaded and checked and it's very, very lightweight. You won't even realize that it's running in your system because the problem which I always face with the Docker a desktop when we have multiple containers, multiple images are running and then a couple of applications I'm running then in that case it is making my system very very slow in fact sometime i have restarted couple of times i upgraded my docker desktop but still there is no solution for that i'm not able to use my google chrome properly and then the entire development process is very very slow in that case so how to do that simple download it it's very simple and then uh, you can see the exact comparison between opstock uh, opstack versus a docker desktop in fact, it will provide you a Linux machine also directly. You don't need to set up any a separate Linux machine. No need to go to the cloud. You can directly set up your own Linux machine here as well. Right. So uh, uh, feature comparison, if you see that, the see the Linux machine, which is available here. And then it's very, very startup uh, process is very fast. The performance wise is amazingly great. Low CPU uses, low power uses, memory on demand, native Mac OS app. Okay. One thing it's only supported as of now for the Mac machine not for the windows machine maybe in future very soon they will be releasing something with respect to windows as well minimal setup is required very simple ui very straightforward two-way file sharing which i really liked it if container is having any uh, file you can download i mean you can migrate or move from uh, container to your system and then from your system to the container so two-way file sharing is very easy but in the docker we have only one way file sharing okay through the docker desktop ssh agent forwarding all these things are commonly available domain names ipv6 and then socket uh, socks proxy and then volume file access that i told you image file access container domains automatic https and everything which is available here so you can go through the entire uh, uh, comparison and then after that if you really want you can start using it i personally believe that it's really really good so how to download in order to download, you can just simply go to their, first of all, you can go to their pricing also. So for the free and personal and the non-commercial use, it's absolutely free. You don't need to pay anything. But if you really want to use it for the business and the commercial purpose, you have to pay a very minimal amount of $8 per user. But if you're using for freelancing or for personal work or just for the running containers and doing your own development or freelancing or any kind of thing, then in that case, you don't need to pay anything here. Simple. So how to download? It's pretty simple. Go to their docs and then uh, simple. Go to the install one and then you can download. Uh, see this uh, with the help of, uh, first of all, side by side and reverting. I'll show you one command. You can download directly DMG file also. Let's go to their quick start. Download Opstack. From here also you can download it or you can just simple run this brew install uh, Opstack. That's it. Okay. And then you can go to their download uh, page also. You can download for your Apple Silicon machine also and the Intel machine as well. Like if you are having any M1, M2, M3 chip, 
or the Intel chip, any of them, you can download that. Or you can just simply run this command, brew install obstack, that's it. So when you start obstack after that, it will look like this. All your images and everything, it will automatically migrate from the Docker. So you just need to, it will give you a prompt. Do you really want to migrate all your images and the containers from the Docker desktop? Yes, you can migrate. And after that, once it's available, you can just simply play with that. See, super lightweight. In fact, it supports pods, Kubernetes services, everything. You can create the machine also. See this, a new Linux machine also that you can use that. And then all the different Docker commands get started, everything. Exactly same thing will work here. You don't need to change anything with respect to Docker. The only thing is that the maintenance of the images and the containers will be handled by Opstock. Okay, Opstack. You don't need to use any Docker desktop. See, I'm not even starting a Docker desktop. You see that here, right? And still I'm able to do that. So the CPU utilization, the memory utilization is very, very minimal. My laptop is not heating up and it's not making any noise and then super easy to use that. It's very, very lightweight. And then it's very easy to start the containers and everything. Same process, same thing, everything will, your same features will be available here as well. You can start the container, you can execute any Docker commands also. See that I'm starting all the containers and the, you can just simply go to the terminal and then clicky, uh, quickly check that Docker PS minus A. You see that all my containers are up and running. You can check how many images are available. You can check all your images over here as well, right? You can run your Docker CLI commands, Docker composers also, you can execute that. For example, let's see if I'm writing Docker compose uh, down and then see that this command is also absolutely working fine. And then all my containers and everything is getting down now. Okay. And then that's it. So you see that all the containers are gone from here, but images are still available here. After that, if I really want to up my infrastructure, simple up minus D I'm writing it. And then after that, within a second, everything is started here. Same feature is available in the Docker desktop, but Docker desktop takes some time to, uh, you know, download and set up. And then when, while running the Docker desktop, also you're doing some other development activities as well. Let's say you're creating a number of microservices for, uh, for that you're using multiple containers. Same thing in automation. Also we have, let's see, you see that so many containers that I have created. Selenium Router, Distributor, one for Edge, Chrome browser, everything I'm using it. So obviously Docker Desktop will make your system very slow because of it eats a lot of memory and the CPU. Plus the battery also, it will um, eat it up. So in that case, it will be very easy solution for you. And now you see that my infrastructure is absolutely working fine. You can go to your localhost 4444 where my Selenium Grid machine is running. And then you can simply start using it, right? And then you can see the logs also that what exactly is happening inside this container. So let's see, I'll go to my Chrome container. I can check the logs and it will give you the, all the logs also that what happened for each and every container. You can just access the Linux uh, terminal also. And then you can just check that what is happening in this particular terminal. Perfect. That also we can do it here. Okay. And then see that for same thing for the edge browser. If you really want to access that, how many files, let's see you are doing something inside this container and some files that you have downloaded there through some API response or clicking on some browser activities or downloading some PDFs there, you can check the files here as well. See that the entire file structure and the folder structure, the complete directory of that particular container, you can see it here. This is something really, really useful. If you really want to create a separate uh, a machine, the Linux machine also, it will provide you. Click on simple new machine here. What kind of machine distribution that you really want to use that? For example, let's see if I really want to go with the CentOS and then simple create a machine here. And then uh, within a few seconds, one CentOS AMD64 machine will be given to you. It will start the machine and then you can access that machine for your development point of view here. You see that you can just restart, rename, and then you can just copy the address of this machine. So the, if you copy the address of this machine, it is CentOS ORB.local. It is displaying like that. Let me check. It's the terminal also. Yeah, see this now it's opening the terminal. And this is actually my uh, Linux machine terminal. You can check it here for this particular machine that I created. And then if you really want to see the folder structure, see that the folder directory structure is also available here. See that bin folder and dev etc home library, everything is available here for that Linux machine. So you don't need to go to any specific cloud for that. And then machines that you can simply create it here. You can create n number of machines again, click on plus and then create another machine. 
here like that. You can rename it also here. So this is just to give you an overview. I personally liked it. And um, if you're facing certain issue with the Docker desktop, start using OpStack here. Thank you so much for watching this video.